Welcome everybody to the Wholesaling Inc. podcast. I am your host Brent Daniels and if this is your first time that you have come across this either on YouTube or on the podcast, welcome. This is the number one podcast when it comes to learning how to wholesale real estate. Now if you are a longtime listener or part of Rhino Tribe, welcome back. You guys are absolutely the most amazing audience of all time because of one simple reason. It's because you take what you hear and you see on on this podcast and you go and you implement it into your business and you actually take action. You guys are the absolute best. So here's the deal. I have with me an incredible young man from Florida, from Tampa Bay, Florida, that is going to take us on his whole story of how he went from not doing any deals to doing over 300,000 this year so far. It's going to be an incredible story. It is my pleasure to introduce everybody on the Wholesaling Inc. podcast and the YouTube channel to Mr. Dan Green. Say hello. What's up, everybody? Brent, that was a pretty good introduction my brother yeah <laughs> well welcome I'm excited Thank so you. Dan came here he is in Phoenix he is actually in my office spending the day with some incredible people incredible. and it's just been it's been great being able to share and learn more about your story but let's 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 tell everybody your story so let's start from the beginning who is Dan Green well I'm 25 I'm originally from Jacksonville um, I moved to Tampa to do wholesaling didn't have any crazy reason like oh the market's this that third no it was just a feeling just go there and just do this and you're gonna do great and that's kind of what happened yeah um, uh, I was in Jacksonville then I moved to Pensacola that's why I got my real estate license became a real estate agent um, did a couple of deals I uh, didn't really know what I was doing, went broke, got evicted out of where we were staying, had to move back to Jacksonville, uh, stayed with a friend on this couch for like three months. I'm like, you know what? I want to take some time to learn this thing that people are saying you don't need any money, any credit to flip houses and make right. a lot of money. I'm right. going to learn this thing and I'm going to go to Tampa and I'm going to get it done. Yeah. And um, those three months on that couch, that's what I did. I left yeah. after three months, came to Tampa. And I was like, you know what? I know a little bit. I still don't know what I need to know. I don't feel like, but I'm just going to do it. Yeah. And I just jumped in, made a bunch of mistakes. And <laughs> three years later, here I am. That was, and you started at like 22 years old, right? Yeah. You're 25 like 22, now. You yeah. were like 21, 22. Mm -hmm. you, you hear about this thing called wholesaling. Right. Right. Was there something about, what about you brought you to real estate? Um, My thing was, I just felt like I was supposed to be doing more. Like I got like a... A creative innovative mind and I felt like working a nine-to-five I couldn't utilize it so I yep. felt dead yeah so I was like okay what can I do where I'm responsible for how successful I am in yeah. my life or how much money I make this year where can I do yeah and real estate was the first thing that caught my eye and I'm like okay I want to kind of get into real estate investing world but I didn't know how to so that's when I did the agent part and I'm yeah like, still don't want to do this me too but this is kind of like kind of kind of gonna be like the the the, the, the vehicle that's gonna drive me to where mm -hmm. I'm trying to be at See, you were smart. See, I got my license and I did it for like 10 years. You got your license and you did it for like, you know, a few months type of Damn, thing. You, you did know? it for 10 years? Dude, I got my license in 2004. I didn't know. That. I know. Yeah, in 2004, you were like four. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, no, hey, yeah, 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 yeah. No, I know, but... You know, it's it, it's really smart. I think that you bring up a good point there. You know, a lot of times we feel like we have to be a realtor first to understand right. what we're doing in this business. Mm -hmm. um, but when you really, when you really strip back everything, mm -hmm. and you look at what really makes a what what is the fundamentals of sourcing like really great deals, right. it all comes down to those quality conversations definitely. with distressed property owners. Yeah, That's it. And you know what they don't teach you in real estate school? It's how to have quality conversations. They don't teach you how to have quality conversations. With distressed property owners. Right. Right. So that three months you're sitting on the couch, what's going through your head? My whole thing is just like, I got to find, I, I, I got to, I want to do this because, I mean, I got a crazy background, man. I haven't always been, you know, on a straight line. You know what I mean? Um, growing up, I, um, I, I went through some tough times as far as like legal stuff or sure. whatever, right? So my thing was... I want to kind of find something that's kind of similar to what I already know, if that makes sense. Okay. Something that I can hustle at and I can do this because of my hustle. I know I got a lot of hustle. I know I got a lot of persistence. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. I know how to make something out of nothing. Yeah. And that's what's like, this kind of seems like that. I want to try to just 
you know, get a, give it a crack. You yeah. Know? And it, and it kind of is like yeah. the same thing almost. Yeah, it is. I mean, he, well, I don't know, but <laughs> I really don't know. But I, but what I'm saying is from the hustle standpoint, really, if you are just starting out and you mm-hmm. don't have a big budget, right. you don't have a huge network of people that know what you're doing or supporting you, right. but you still go out every single day looking for opportunities right. and you stay consistent with it, right. you're going to win. So like my like like when I first started, right? My biggest challenge, right? When I first started, I did not know how to get a deal. Yeah. Only thing that I knew was if I keep looking, I'm gonna find one. But yeah. I didn't know how to like I don't know, I don't I didn't know how to formalize how to get a deal. Yeah. So I'm looking on Craigslist some mornings, I'm looking here, I'm looking on Zillow, I'm doing this that, and third. I was a deal finder, but I was hustling every single day. Yeah. In my first year, I think I spent like what? Maybe less than my first year I probably spent like Less than two grand the whole year and made a hundred thousand mm-hmm. dollars. Everything that I got did not come from marketing. It came from me going out there and looking for stuff, knocking on doors, doing whatever I had to do. You know what I mean? Talking to people. Talking to people, <laughs> exactly. Talking no, I mean people. really, yeah. I mean yeah. When, when you break it down. So what were you doing? Were you so you were knocking on doors, you were who would you talk to? Would you try to get referrals? Were you talking to people to send you deals? Were you just like were you going direct to the seller? Were you going to like I, so my like my my very first deal right um my very first deal came from facebook and it's crazy because like i said i spent three months on the couch right mm-hmm. when i came to tampa it's like okay i'm gonna do this but i still need some money in my pocket so i worked this job i said all right i'm gonna work this job for three months i'm yeah. guaranteed for three months as long as i show up on time yeah all right so yeah. i'm gonna show up on time and i'm gonna learn this some more while i'm doing this when i find a deal yeah so every day at that job i'm on craigslist and i'm on facebook every single day came into one of my local um uh, real uh facebook groups that we have mm-hmm. and i'm just looking on there every single day and it's invest he's on there he's like hey I need a wholesaler to wholesale this deal for me or whatever I had tried to do two deals before that that fell apart yep. like I said I just jumped into it and know what I was doing learned a ton like a ton in those first two deals yeah and when he put the deal up I'm like I think I can move that I think mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. I had one buyer that I ran into when I was driving for dollars and I seen a guy with a Porsche at a beat up house yeah he's got to be a buyer yeah, that's a buyer so I got his phone that's number. a flipper right that's there. a flipper so yeah. I got his phone number and when he shot when he put that deal out there I text him or I messaged him I uh, got the rest of the details about the property I shot it over to the guy and in like 30 minutes I had it so I only made three grand on there but that was sure. the best three grand I ever made in my life that's the thing I mean the first deal going from believing you can doing it to it to having money right. income in your hand in your pocket in your bank account from your efforts that makes the whole thing you 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 understand that it's real it's real now you know and now that you know it's real then then you're starting to because right. you went from three grand and then made another 97 grand in a year because look this is how it went right like i said when i got that job right yeah i was guaranteed three months i'm like all right i'm gonna work this job mm-hmm. on the 90th day i want them to tell me i'm fired yeah that's my goal i yep. do not want a job right. after these 90 days yeah on my 90th day, mm-hmm. I went and picked up that check. Mm-hmm. I closed it on that 90th oh. day. I got fired. I love. I went to pick up that uh, that check, and I have not had a job since. I love it. And that year is like, all right, that's real. That's real. What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? I gotta do something. I don't know. I just gotta do something. Yeah. So I'm talking to people. I'm on Facebook every day. When my first deal came from this, so I'm gonna keep doing it, right? Yep. Then I got on the offer up. I got like three deals from offering up offer, mm-hmm. from offer up. Just looking on there, um, Craigslist. I'm literally getting in my car. I'm driving for dollars. I'm getting out of the car, knocking on the doors, going to the neighbors say, hey do you know about this house right here do you know about this that and the third mm-hmm. and that's kind of how it came along and just telling everybody of course so real quick because i'm going to get a lot of comments on the youtube channel and yeah. if you guys are listening to this and want to watch us just uh go to youtube brent daniels real estate you can check it out um but what do you mean you got three deals from offer up um, break it like how do you so you went on offer up and and people are so trying to sell a property yeah so basically so i was on offer up um Excuse me. And this is back in like 2017. Um, I'm on there and I'm just looking for people who are selling houses. Because people sell houses yeah. on offer up. Yeah. So I'm just looking. I'm looking, and I see one guy who had a, the lowest price in there. He wanted like 60 grand for it. Yeah. So I just hit him up. I said, Hey, is it still available? He said, Yeah, it's still available. I put it in Zillow really quick. Zillow had it at like 90 some thousand. I was mm-hmm. like, Okay, let me just see if I can get him down. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. So um, I talked to him, and it turned out the dude was telling me. I actually went out to the house, right? Yeah. And he told me, you know. I have cancer mm-hmm. and I need this surgery. Mm-hmm. I need this money. I'm mm-hmm. actually selling this house uh, so I can move in with my girlfriend and we can have this money to kind of support us. I can get the surgery and stuff like that. I'm like, all right, all right. So I think that this is a deal based off of being a, being a rental. 
off it being a rental. So yeah, we made that deal happen like that. Um, from 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 offer up, found it. He was he was going through uh, some a, a deep problem in his life. He had a sure. really big pain. Yeah, he needed money and he had cancer. And it's like okay, like I'm helping this guy out. Yeah. And I think from that deal, I made like eighty five hundred dollars from that deal. Mm -hmm. And I think that was like my third deal that I had did on my own. Yeah. So that's how that one came from off road. Yeah, there's a theme to this though. You are being proactive right. every single day. I have and we patience. talked about this in this office yeah. because you're now go growing to the point where you want to go next step, next step, right. next step, get to that million dollar mark, exactly. start start um, working on it, not in it. Mm -hmm. It's kind of cliche, but if that makes sense, he wants to make sure that he's not always hustling every single day to find these deals right. because you still have that in you, but you mm -hmm. want to build a business to where right. it serves you. Right. Right, you know, which is huge. And I think, you know, just everybody listening and watching, it's this didn't cost you anything. This wasn't this no. wasn't a huge marketing budget. No. You were just literally thinking creatively, how do I find people that'll take it? Uh, discount on their house? Right. How do I find distressed property owners? How do I find somebody that I can help solve their problem? Right. Which you did. Right. This guy was a cancer, needed money, was going through. I mean, when it's really interesting because we work with a lot of people that, not a lot, but we come across it often that people are, their health is not great. Right. And you know what they don't care about? You know what the number one thing they care about is? Is their health. Right. They just want to feel good again. Right. You know what I mean? And they have all the stress from this house that's all beat up. They need money. They feel financially strapped. They're just going through this really difficult situation. You come in a couple weeks later, boom, that's off their plate. They've got money. They've got a good, better situation. Yeah. Now they can focus 100% on what's going on with their health. Right. And it's a huge thing. People do, people don't really, I mean, maybe you take it for granted or don't really understand it if you're not, if you're a healthy person. But when you're not healthy, that's the only thing that you think about. Right. Yeah. Especially like when you, when your life is on the line, like he was part of that cancer, like I can lose my life. Right. If I don't get what, I, I don't remember what he had to get done, but yep. whatever it was, it was like, I can lose my life yep. if I don't do this. hundred you know? percent. So let's talk about, um, you joined TTP. Right. And then out the gate, you were like, yeah. I'm going to hire people. Right. I'm going to get a staff. Right. Let's talk about that. Like, well, so when I, when we came on the TTP, right, we were already uh, we were already doing cold calling, right? Yeah. But I felt like it was something that I was missing that can like I was like, okay, what do I do now? I'm calling. I'm getting deals and stuff, right? I yep. actually got a few. I think my first TTP deal, well, my first cold calling deal, I made like forty thousand dollars. That was crazy. <laughs> yeah. Right? And I was like. I want to cold call, but I yeah. always wanted to cold call from the beginning, right? right? But I didn't know where to get numbers and all that yeah. stuff from or whatever, yeah. right? And yeah. then I found it out, yeah. and I'm cold calling. I found out about Mojo, and I'm cold calling and stuff, and I'm getting the deals, and I'm like, okay, I still feel like I'm missing something. And I come across this podcast or this YouTube video <laughs> one day with this guy. He's just talking all about cold calling people and just, I have no patience. Yeah. I can't wait. Right. I don't want to send out direct mail yeah. and wait for yeah. you to call me back. Yeah. I want a yes or no right now. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I found this guy. He's like, he's on the same type of time I'm on. Mm -hmm. So I'm listening. I'm listening. Like, okay. I think by joining this program that even though I'm already doing it, it'll be something that I take away from this yep. that's going to like take me to like the next level yep. in which that happened. Yep. So when we joined, that was like, what, last year, yep. September? Mm -hmm. I had only made like $100,000 each year. This year, uh, we're not even done with the year yet. I'm already at about $300,000. Mm -hmm. So I appreciate that, brother. Well, let's do this because... We've got the victory belt oh, for three hundred thousand. He gets to ring it himself because he's in that. the office. I get to do that. Ring it! Yeah! yeah. yeah. Victory bell, three hundred thousand for the year so far, and um, you're still. I mean, uh, almost all of that is cold calling. All of that's cold. All of it's cold Everything. calling. All of that's and cold you've calling. got you've got three or four callers in the Philippines. Right. Right. right? Yeah. And you you we talked about this early. You have a very, very interesting way that you filter out your people. Yeah. Right? You want to make sure that they sound as American as right. possible. Right. So I take a lot of time. Um, when it comes to hiring and finding my cold calls, like literally I'll go through 40, 50, 60, 70 people just to hire one person mm -hmm. because I wanted to be like, okay, I don't want to be able to tell that right. you're overseas. Right. You know what I mean? I want yep. you to sound like you're an American because a lot of people, when they're hearing that accent, mm -hmm. that's a red flag automatically. Shut down. Is this a scam? Get off my phone. Hang up. We get calls all the time about, you know, you your the IRS taxes and it's somebody that, that has a Filipino accent, exactly. you know, or has has uh, some kind of accent right. and it's like 
you know, as soon as you hear it, you're almost you you're, that reflex know that you have to stiff arm mm -hmm. that person or just hang right. up is is strong. It, it's strong, and I got to I I I train my cold callers. I I make calls once a week now. Yeah. And they listen to me for an hour. Love it. So I do that every week. Mm -hmm. And then every uh, every week I have one hour set for them individually. Yep. And I coach them on how to talk, if you're pronouncing something wrong, just anything that I can do to kind of like get you from here to here when it comes to your, your you know, your language or your accent or whatever it is. Yeah. Because that... It, it, it's it's crazy how much they hang up on me. As soon as they as soon as they they hear that, and I yep. tell my co callers like, look, it's a lot of people who hire people in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. So don't take a don't take offense if I'm telling you, hey, look, you don't pronounce that word like that, yeah. or you don't do this. Don't take offense to it. It's just a lot of people who hire people in the Philippines to do scam work, yep. and it doesn't have a good reputation. Right. So I spend a lot of time with them on that. Well, not only that, I think they want that help. They do. It makes them better. A lot of these people are college educated. Right. A lot of these people have degrees. Right. You know what I mean? Like. Yeah. It's just the, the economy there doesn't support a huge workforce, so they have to do other jobs, and outsourcing your calls to them is, is you know, an opportunity for them right. to, one, have cons a consistent job. You've had somebody over a year, yeah, yeah, right? Yep. And then you keep getting new talent, and you keep getting, I think it's brilliant, mm -hmm. you told me... The one that you have that's been with you the longest, you get them to post on their Facebook yep, yep. to find other people that are like them. Right. I think that's genius. They know exactly what I'm looking of for, course. exactly what I want. And so when they get their people, it's like, okay, I think Dan may like him. He may not like him. Let me send over their voice recording. Yep. And then we go from that. And I found some pretty amazing people this time around. Yep. Remember I told you, I had to let go a lot of my co-callers a couple of months ago yep. because it was just like I wasn't giving them the time and training that they needed so they were not producing as good as they as good as I wanted them to yep and a lot of them got burnt out and yep. just that and third okay I had to let them go now I'm just starting all over and I'm taking my time and dedicate that's like really want to spend a lot of my time at as well love it love it and it's paying off it is definitely paying it's off. paying off so who is t tell me the structure of your your company so you've got four callers mm -hmm. making calls right that you've got you mm-hmm so right now I have the four callers. Yep. I'm trying to get to five. Hopefully today I, I have an interview later on in the day. So I'll, hopefully I'll have five today. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to have two more next week. Mm -hmm. uh, but for right now I have the four. Then I have my acquisitions manager who we're slowly trans, uh, transitioning to disposition manager mm -hmm. and we're actively looking for acquisition manager. So for right now, just on the front end, it's just us two. Yep. It's a pretty heavy load. And that's why I'm here with you today. We're talking about how we can kind of uh, yep. uh, hire more people to kind of get the, the process going better from the direction that I wanted to go in for. For right now, yep. it's just the four cold callers, me and my acquisition manager. Got it. And that four cold callers, I mean, you are, they're, they're very affordable. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you keep a lot of your money. Yeah. Yeah, you do. I do. That's, that's, since day one, I remember the welcome call that I had with you. You're like, listen, I have no interest in making a million dollars and only keeping 10% of it. No. You know what I mean? You're like, I want to keep as much money as possible. It's just a smart business mindset. Right. You know, some people go and they want to spend, 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 spend. You almost are like, I almost have to push you to spend. Right, because right? it's like a lot of people focus on gross. Yes. It's not about gross, no. it's about what you take home. Right. And that's what I'm focusing on, gross is showcase. Yeah. yeah, that's it. That's just the, you know, hey, I'm, I'm the big guy. Yeah. You know what I mean? No, what you take home is what matters. So yeah. that's what I'm focused on. That's why I love TTP. Yeah. I love cold calling because for one, I don't have to wait around and wait for answers from anyone. Yep. I don't have to spend a ton of money onto it. Um, and then, I feel like I get results quicker. Yeah. Well, and if there's talent mm -hmm. in Tampa Bay that's watching this or listening to this, mm -hmm. how do they get a hold of you to see if uh, you've got opportunities to grow, to, to be part of your team? Yeah, I mean, um, I'm active on Instagram. You can uh, find me on Instagram. I think it's at three underscores. So it's underscore, 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 money man Dan. And okay. that's on Instagram, so that's where I spend a lot of my time at. Facebook, I'm Dan Green, but Instagram. Send him a name. DM. Send him a send them a message yeah, yeah, if you are in Tampa Bay. If you feel like you've got some talent, if you feel like you've got you, you understand his personality, and what he's looking for, and if you've got an unbelievable work ethic and you love talking to people, reach right. out to him. Yeah. So give some advice now on give some advice that of, of people that maybe they're they're the guy on the couch, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Maybe they're the one that that yes. They have that burning desire inside mm -hmm. side of them to not have a nine to five, mm -hmm. to be a, to be creative, to be an entrepreneur. Like they have that, but they just they need a little bit of push to take action. One thing I tell you, you can have all the motivation and desire, and it burns right here. That's where you feel it. Like it's like acts like a burn right mm -hmm. here, right? Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter if you don't do anything about it. No. Like literally, you got to take that leap of faith and do something. Like. 
if that's it, I'm not gonna tell anybody to quit their job. But like for me and my situation, it. right? Yeah. Yep. That day, I did I I did not do what I was supposed to do do at that job except for show up on time because I knew that's all I needed for three months. Yep. So they would have to fire me right. for ninety days. Yep. And I wouldn't have a job. I risked it all. I only had three grand. I only had fifteen hundred dollars in my name when I got fired from that job. Mm -hmm. And then I had three grand um, from the deal. Mm -hmm. I didn't have a lot. I had bills. I had just that in the third or whatever. And I'm yeah. like, all right, I'm willing to risk it all now that I know that it's real. So you got to be able, you got to be willing to 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 take action. Like it, it doesn't even matter how much, you know, how, how much it burns and how, how much motivation you got or whatever. If you don't do anything about it, you're mm -hmm. going to be, my granddad told me this, right? Something that he said, and it took me forever to get it. It's pretty simple. But if you do what you always did, you get what you always got. Yeah. You want something different, you got to do something different. So if that's, you know, if you don't have a big budget, that doesn't matter. Get in your car, get on your bicycle, get on your skateboard, whatever. Go and take down the worst addresses in the neighborhood. Yep. Find these people, talk to them, tell everybody what you're doing. I mean, you just got to get out there and talk, and it's going to come to you. Craigslist, offer up, all these things are available to us mm -hmm. on, 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 on our cell phone, these apps, these websites and stuff where people are selling stuff. Post ads. Do whatever you can. Just do something. You can't just sit around and think about it. And even listening to your podcast is great. Yep. But it's not going to get you anywhere no. if you don't take action on the stuff no. that he's telling you. Yeah. All this great information that he's telling you, that 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 the wholesale and eat um, tribe is telling you, and that I'm telling you, I mean, it's good. But if you don't do anything, you're not going to get anything. It's not going to get anything. Yeah, and all the resources. If you're listening to this, listening to this for the first time, or maybe watching this for the first time, there's a ton of resources down below. You can check it out so you know where to get the numbers. You know the resources to be able to get the information for the people that you see on the street. It's all laid out for you. Listen, there is no excuse the only thing that you need to do is like take this instruction take this advice that Dan's giving you this instruction that he's given you and just take action hmm. just talk to people just pick up the phone and have that conversation step out of your comfort zone and talk to people everything that you need everything that you need is on this channel on this podcast you you cannot lose if you take action and you're consistent That's with it so I want to say thank you I for being you. on here. Appreciate You're incredible. It, Thanks for flying out here and spending time with me. It has been my honor, my pleasure. And for anybody out there that is interested in joining the most proactive group in real estate investing, it is at go to wholesalinginc.com forward slash TTP. Check out what the program's about. Check out all the testimonials. If it feels good in your gut, then sign up for a call. And I look forward to working with you personally. Until next time, guys, I encourage you to talk to people. See ya.